Okay, so let us start. Hello. So, <laughs> so as I already gave this lecture in Churchill, there is not a big audit, so I'll probably uh, have to get to know your names. What are your names? David. David. Okay, Simon and David. Okay. So, uh, so the lecture is about war theory. And first of all, uh, to show you that uh, words are not boring, I have this movie that tries to support this statement. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, let's go to something serious. So, hashing. This is actually a really useful technique in practice. And you probably already heard about hashing a lot uh, in probably in Java practicals where every object can have associated hash function. So, here hashing, uh, what, what can we use hashing for? So, there are two, two basic uses of hashing. First of all, is in hash table so that we can we can actually store our data in hash table and, and make it spread uh, equally over the over the entries of table. And the other one is data comparison where if two data have two pieces of data have equal hash then there is a high probability that they are equal. So I will talk about hashing strings and uh, <coughs> So how, how, how do we do that? So first of all, we have some string A, which consists of characters A, 2, 3, up to A, N. And hash should be something like easy to store, easy to compare. So it's usually 64-bit uh, integer. So how do we transform a string into integer? Well, first of all, we have to realize that like letters, are nothing different than numbers, right? Like in 
for example, even in practice, you have like ASCII characters have uh, numbers associated with it, like uh, small a is, I think, 97 and stuff, right? So now, how do we, how do we uh, translate a word into the into into a number? So we notice this few dualities, right? So first of all, word is a sequence of letters. So there is duality between word and actual sequence of numbers, right? It's basically the same. And that's, that's the easy duality, a little bit less, less intuitive duality, is that each sequence of number can be represented as polynomial, right? So maybe if I change my numbering slightly, it will be easy to see. You can have So what about the, the so so now given this facts, how do you transform this uh, string into some uh, number? Any ideas? Is it x equals two? Yes. So so we just take some concrete x, right? So there are two problems with it. First of all, what two is not such a good choice. Uh, what about any ideas why? Well, okay. So let let's uh, let's think about it. If you have some polynomial for some concrete x, right? So so polynomial <coughs> evaluated at some concrete x can be. You think actually? Okay, no. Let's let's. Let's make it not concrete yet. So th there is another duality. Mm, sorry, there should be no commas. It can be number of base x, right? But here we have to put some constraint on x. Here it's this is up to these all things if x is greater than max of a1, a2, an, right? Because we cannot have, in, in binary we cannot have the number 2, right? And so such a choice of x that is bigger than its maximum would be actually really good because then if we have such a polynomial evaluated at this x, then we can uh, using non algorithms of transforming the base of number, actually, uh, just we could evaluate this polynomial at base 10, then we can get back the coefficients at base x using non algorithms, right? So that, that's why it's better to have some x that is bigger than all the letters. So now let's assume that we have. Do, 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 do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So now let's assume that we have. Uh, so uh, now let, let's let's assume that we have our letters from the ASCII alphabet. So we get x equals roughly 300, right? For simplicity. Now, what's the what's the problem with with evaluating this uh, expression? Well, you may have to calculate like 300 at the 10th. Or more, so, they so it's going to get really big, yeah, right? Really, really big. So it wouldn't fit 64 bit integer, no, 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 not a chance, or even like quite short words, right? So, so what we do then, and now it's not go no longer duality, right? We're gonna evaluate this polynomial. Then, then, then we are fine, right? 
So now, here second dot, it sometimes fails. So uh, this, the, like, if we try to check if two strings are equal and compare them and get that the recaches are equal, it does not necessarily mean that the strings are equal because two strings can have the same caches now if we take it modulo C, right? Uh, okay, so that's easy. Uh, yeah, so, so if we want to decrease this probability of collision, we can calculate two hashes for two different C1 and C2, and, and then compare both of these numbers, and therefore we, increase, we basically square the probability of, of fail. Uh, it extends to higher dimensions. Uh, I, won't, I don't have time to actually show you how, uh, but it's basically something like taking x and y and like evaluating along x along some column and then y for the first row, y squared for the second row. So it's, it's easy to work out. Uh, yeah, okay. So now how, how, do we, how do we exactly use it? Well, why is it so useful? So basically, we often have we often have some sequence and of and we operate on subboards or of sub substreams of this sequence. Right? So so quite often we have some word S and some subword S I J which equals S I to AJ, right? And, you, and often in this kind of problems, we want to compare these subwords very quickly. So now hashing allows us to do, as it says on the top, pre-process this input stream in all of them linearly, and then compare the sub substrings in constant complexity with this small probability of failure. So how do we do that? So basically, what we do is we calculate it uh, such that if we have, well, basically it, it would be a little bit like inverse of what I was saying before. So if we have such a word, we would, we, we basically, we, how to tell you, we take a zero times x to the power of n, plus the dot, dot plus a n times x to the power of zero sort of like inversely because it doesn't really matter it's just our up to f right this will actually make our life easier our actual implementation easier uh, so why because if we calculate this for every prefix of this board right so so if we have a zero, a one, a two, a n. So for this prefix, we will have a zero. For this prefix, we would have a one plus a zero x. For this prefix, we would have a zero x squared <coughs> plus a one x plus a zero, and so on, right? And and now. If we want to say, cal cal so we do it for each prefix, right? And we can do it linear complexity. We just take the old one, multiply it by x, and add the current letter, right? And uh, and then if we want to calculate hash of this word, what we do? We just take the poly polynomial for 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 it, this for this prefix, right? And we sub subtract the polynomial for this prefix, multiply it by x to the power of difference uh, between the number indices, right? So we multiply a zero by x squared and subtract it from this guy. And therefore we obtain the hash for this subword. And then we can uh, just compare the hashes for two words. So let me show you the actual how, how is it implemented in practice. It's like the CRC. CRC. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know what this CRC. Um, I probably I know, but I don't know that it's called like, uh, it's it's some kind of hash for yeah um, for files. 
for packets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. So I didn't have networking course yet. I don't really don't have networking, so sorry for that. Uh, so, okay, let me just make the font a little bit bigger so this is visible on the recording. So, so how does it look like? So basically, uh, uh, let me actually also change that into the black background because it's probably simple reason. So, oh, that should be better, I suppose. Okay. So, so what do we do? We scan the, this input string and we won't index it instead of zero indexing it. Which, which, which will give us some <coughs> benefit later on. We calculate the length, the length of this word. And for each word, we calculate this polynomial. It's h of i, uh, h of i basically, for prefix of length i. But, so why, do we, why don't we do the modulo here that I, that, I, that I suggested? Well, basically, not always done, done for us when we overflow the integer. Yeah, it's, it's like modulo the life of integer. So we don't, don't have to explicitly write it, which makes our life convenient. Uh, and here I also pre-calculate the powers of 300 modulo life of integer, because remember, here we have to multiply it by x squared, right? So in, in principle, it can be like x to the 10 million, where it, it, will, it has to be pre-calculated, right? And then when we, we compare, we just get the indices and we take the hash of it minus the power power times the hash of the left, right? And and actually, the fact that we won't index this word means that uh, we don't we don't really have to give a special treatment to the case where we subtract something here <coughs> because we have just zero here because we won't index our string. Uh, okay, this, does that sound all right? Okay. Let me show you how it works in practice. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me show you the parents coming. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, let me just make the uh, again font bigger. Well, that's not it. Okay, so let's go there, compile it. And launch it. And let's give it this word as an input. And now we compare some more. So for example, uh, we what what word will give me the answer yes? What in this is? Like for example, one, two, three, four, right? So A, B at the beginning, no, sorry. That will help me now, okay? Because it's A, B, and I, C, right? And if I compare A, B at the beginning and A, B at the end, so this, I get this. So that's works. It's, it's really simple. Let's not waste too much time on it. Uh, okay, so now, something different. This is KMR algorithm that I'm not really going to describe, I just want to mention it. So basically, it never fails. Like, hashing sometimes fails, this never fails. But the downside of it is that we have to do a linear logarithmic time preprocessing. Uh, and comparison is still constant time. Uh, so if we do a lot of comparison, but only one preprocessing, then it might be worth thinking about it. It gives us something stable for free, and I don't know uh, which you are from? Um, F. F. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So, on our lecture, uh, second year, there was uh, recently mentioned a Barros-Wheeler transform that is used in BZ uh, to compress data. 
and we bought Suffix table to put in work in practice because of the performance reason. Uh, but, but anyway, when, when it comes to actually using KMR for comparing stream, it's a lot worse performance than hashing because, because it's worse complexity and then because it caches badly. Because this algorithm actually, when it preprocesses the stream, it doesn't do it linearly. Like hashing, it, it accesses it diff <coughs> different indices, right? And this is actually kind of interesting algorithm. If, if, if you decide after this lecture that you like more theory, you might want to look at it. Uh, it's, it's, it's really educating to look at it. So now, string matching problem, right? So it means we have some big, like it's basically control F, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so KMP, and this is the uh, reason I'm giving this lecture, because this is the core of it. This is the most awesome algorithm. Do you know KMP? No. Have you heard of it? No. Oh, yeah, okay. What, what have you heard? Uh, I've just heard of it, like, no. Okay, heard the name. Yeah. Okay, so it's Knut Morris Pratt algorithm. Do you know Donald Knut? Yeah, this is kind of famous computer science, so this kind of says that this algorithm is going to be awesome. And uh, indeed, we, first of all, we have to use some definitions so that we, we can understand some kind of complex formulation of something that is kind of really simple. But, but at the beginning it sounds complex, but don't worry about it. Uh, so word, sequence of character, subword I already defined there. Concatenation of words, this uh, example is pretty straightforward, I think, right? We just put them near, to, near each other. Repeated word, it's like raising it to the bar, sort of. We just repeat the word at times. Prefix is, uh, <coughs> prefix, like everybody knows what prefix is. Uh, we, we can also have empty prefix, and we can have a prefix which is in principle the whole word, right? In mathematical sense, same with suffix. And we say that prefix and suffix are proper when they are not empty word and not the whole word, right? So, and now new thing is prefix and suffix. This you probably didn't hear, hear about before. And this is something that, this is the word that is at the same time prefix and suffix of some word. Okay. And so what does KMP? KMP computes the longest proper, so not empty and not the whole word, prefix or suffix for all prefixes of given word. Okay, so so let me give you an example what, what, of what it is and how is that useful, and then I will tell you how to implement it. So let's take as an example word A, B, A, C, A, B, A, B, right? And now for each prefix, uh, so starting with A, we calculate the length of longest proper prefix or suffix. So here A is its prefix or suffix because it's, it's sort of prefix and suffix, right? But it's not proper because it's a whole word, right? So we, we say it's zero, not because the length of the prefix or suffix is zero, because we, it's not proper, but we just want to somehow indicate that there exists no prefix or suffix. So we can make a dot over here to make it different from zero, right? But in practice, when we will implement, we will just use zero. But just let's, let's make it clear that mathematically, zero is not a correct answer here, right? Okay, for B, a, B, uh, we still doesn't have a proper prefix or suffix, which is not the whole word, so it's still zero. And here, there is proper prefix or suffix, A, right? So it's not left one, right? <coughs> so A, B, A, C is... Why would it be one? ABA, and then ABA. I, I'm talking about this word. So we we have ABA at the beginning, but at the end we have BAC instead of ABA. Okay, so you need to go the other one. Okay. Yeah? So so it's zero. And here, what do we have? Mm -hmm. 
Not here? Uh, here? Yes, two. Here? And here? Four? Two. Yes. Okay, great. So we now understand what this algorithm does, right? And now, why is that useful? And why is that useful is kind of, I think, super cool because it's super simple. So. So, so say we have an algorithm that computes it, right? And now we have this problem of string matching. So we have our control F small word that we are looking for, right? And we have our big text, T. And we want to find every occurrence of F in T. And how? So assume we have this algorithm. We have K and P of some string that does something and then re returns this table of numbers. Mm -hmm. So, so and we don't really know how it works, but we know it does correct, right? So, and now we are given this F and T, and how do we use K and T to actually find all the occurrences of F and T? Any ideas? Meanwhile, check with, with the bar because it will be wrong. Right. Ah, uh, very good. Okay. So, no ideas? Any hint? Any hint? Uh, it's difficult to give a hint because it's kind of. So, so what if our F. So, we want. We, so, if. This is free. It means this character, this sequence of character, occurred somewhere to the right here. Yeah. So how can we use it? You may look at F. Of T? Well, not really. So, hmm. How, 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 how do, how do so, so we want to construct one string that we will input to K and P. What, what, what string will it, will it be? Like, but we have F and T, so maybe we will just do something with F and T, like both of them. We want to construct one string out of them. So, we can, okay, let me just tell you the answer. We construct F hash T, right? Where hash is some dis distinguishable character that is not in any of this word. Right? And now, uh, let me just launch the my K and E implementation, not to calculate this all by hand. Uh, so and now let's let's look for the string ABA. So we do ABA hash ABA uh, C A B A B. And we get our table. So we, we get three at the seventh position, right? So what, what it tells us is that for this, pre, for this prefix, the level of the prefix, prefix the suffix is three, which actually means that we match the word on the left to the word on the line, right? And here, bat last index also yields three, which means we have occurrence of the word here, right? Does it sound good? Yeah, because it's for this prefix, this word will be prefix to suffix, right? And it never will be longer than three, 
because we have this hash character here that will never occur at the end of any word later on because it's not in this text. Okay, so so that's basically the how how this algorithm works and how how this algorithm can be used. Sorry. And okay, now so should I add no? I should now show you how this algorithm works. And this is also kind of cool because we will draw a lot of pictures and suddenly you will re realize that this algorithm is simple and beautiful. So uh, here is some diagram that I'm going to redraw. Um, So this diagram basically tells us that if you have this long word S, right, uh, and it has some prefix suffix, right? So so basically this is the same as this. This is like this. Do you understand what I mean by this? This is just I didn't really tell you what this is, but it's kind of exactly what this picture represents, right? Okay, so the observation is this, so this S is in principle some prefix for which we're going to calculate our algorithm, right? And it has this prefix or suffix, right? So now, this prefix or suffix of this word S is also in principle the prefix of the whole word, right? And it also has its own prefix or suffix, right? So it has prefix or suffix here, right? But then this word is the same as this word. So we can rewrite what we draw inside this box here. So these four small squares, they are all, all the same, right? So if I take this guy and this guy, in principle, they are also a prefix suffix of a big word, right? So now without like strict mathematical proof, but it's really easy to conduct both ways actually. I will, I will tell you that if you have some word S and you calculate that some prefix or suffix of it, so so of length P of S, where P of S is the length of the suffix of, of, of prefix, pro, maximum proper prefix to suffix of word S, right? If you want to take the set of all prefix to suffixes of word S, all proper ones, it will be P of S, P of P of S, and P of P of P of S, and so on, right? Does, is it clear? Right? So, so I, I want all prefix or suffixes of this word, right? Yeah. So I'll take its longest prefix or suffix, then I take the longest prefix or suffix of this prefix or suffix, okay. and... So, you know, what's P contain? So, P, the so, it, it's the length okay. of the... It, we represent prefix or suffixes by its length. So the length okay. of the the length of the longest one, right? So, so here, here we take the longest one of the whole word. <coughs> then to obtain the next prefix or suffix of this whole word S, we take the length of the longest prefix or suffix of this prefix or suffix, right? And by use of this of this this property, we can actually like really easily prove that it's true, right? We just prove that if something is in the set, it's prefix or suffix. And if something is prefix or suffix, it's in, it is in this set. This, this is really trivial to run around. Uh, second observation that actually make, sort of gives us the idea of how fine our algorithm will look like is as follows. <coughs> if we have a prefix of a whole word 
and you got in this I. And we take the prefix of the whole word, which is long, one character longer. Right? So we got some characters C here, some prefix or suffix P of the shorter word. Now, to calculate the prefix or suffix for this word, what well, all we do basically is first of all, here we have some character X. And we check if X equals C, then the longer word has the prefix or suffix one longer than the other. Okay? And now, so this is the observation. And now what we do is just, we, we can also turn it the other way around. If they were to be some prefix or suffix of this word, right? In principle, this shorter word would have this prefix or suffix here, if these characters were equal, right? So it works sort of both ways. So Again, if and only we have if and only if here, which actually gives us the idea of the algorithm. So what we do is basically we start from the word of length zero, and we recursively calculate the prefix or suffix, and basically each index in this of this uh, input word, if we try to calculate the prefix or suffix of this word, we look if these two characters are the same, and if they are not. We look at the next longest prefix or suffix of this smaller word. So it will be so, something here, P2, and something here as well, P2, right? From the first observation, right? So, and then we look at this character X2 and see if this is equal to C. And if it is, we got another prefix or suffix, right? If it, like another, like the previous one wasn't, so the first one, right? Yeah. And let me, let, me, let me just repeat it, this step recursively as, as many times as we require until we find some prefix or suffix, or this will be of length zero, in which case the answer is zero, right? So, so the, 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 this may sound a little bit complicated, but when we look at the actual code, It's really, again, sorry for Polish comments. Uh, so, so it's, it's again, we scan word, we calculate its length. And then for the first word, we, we just, uh, we can immediately say that it's of, uh, it's prefix of having sub length zero, right? And then for each prefix, we just say that T is the last length of the prefix of suffix that we gave as an answer to previous prefix. And as long as T is bigger than zero, and these two letters do not equal these two, we set T to the left of the next prefix or suffix, right? And we repeat it as long as these two letters do not equal. And in the end, we can in principle have T equals zero, so we have to again check if these two letters actually equal each other. And then we set the length of prefix or suffix for if prefix to bt, right? Okay, so that's that's kind of simple. Um, I know, and this uh, this this algorithm is I think pretty nice. Uh, and okay, let's 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 do something more fun then. Uh, so let me go back to my presentation. I think this might sound, sound a little bit useless, but it actually isn't. And th this was pr proved not by me, but, but by my friend, who's a third year currently, and he said that it's actually useful in his individual project. Uh, so, so cyclic, cyclic equivalence, right? So if you want to check having two words, if they are cy cyclically equivalent, what we mean by that is if B, if A equals A B and B equals A B A, we want to check if A is equal to any of the rotations of B, 
rotation being bringing this ladder for the, to the beginning, for example, and getting B A A, or bringing another ladder to the to the end and getting A A B, right? And so on. just like sort of rotate them to the point. Like if, it, if it was cyclic, we just if we had a longer example, uh, we can write it as something like, well, like this, right? And it's sort of like a circle. And here we have pointer to the beginning of the word. And we can sort of rotate it. And then the pointer will point at the next beginning, sort of. And we always go around the circle reading it. That's why it's called rotation. And to check cyclic equivalence of two words, we do a hash bb, right? And then for, if we take example of this word, we would have a b hash a b a a b a, right? And uh, and this this is one of the rotations. This is the second of the rotation. This is the third, the one, and so on. And then this this guy, if if it's cyclically equivalent, at some point we will get a match, right? Okay, like match of the following of this one. Okay, so that's easy. Then what is not easy is this exercise. So now I will wake you up a little bit and get you more involved. Uh, we want to solve this question. Do you understand the question? Yeah. What's a stamp? Okay. So we have some big word, like the one everyone can do it proper, like the one over there. Right? And a stamp is such a word that if you have a stamp with some substring of this of this big word, we could use this stamp exclusively to actually write the whole word by repeatedly placing it on the paper, right? So we just have our stamp of this and we place it here, then we place it here, then we place it here, then we place it here, here, and we sort of get the input word, right? And we, as stamps are very expensive, especially if you have words that are million letters left, we want to find the shortest such a stamp, right? So, and also, let's notice that this cannot actually exceed the, the word, because then we would have some letters that we don't want at the border, we don't want this, right? So, we want to find shortest such a stamp, and so the deal is that our manager actually told us that the, the we, he wants to stamp for the string that is million character long, calculated by your program in less than one second. Okay? So, uh, so uh, how, how, how do we have a go about solving? solving? Any ideas? Well, it looks like an alignment problem, right? Like a, what looks kind like of problem? Align. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's 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 don't worry about the complexity at all. Let's just find any solution that works, any at all. Um, is it the case that all stamps are the same? All stamps are the same. You mean there is only one stamp? Yeah, yeah, I just have five copies of the same pattern. B A B B A. But well, you can have a bigger stamp. You can have uh, well, okay. Let me let me. So if you have the word consisting only of letters A, then it has like it, when it has n letters A, then it has basically n stamps, right? Because it can be the sole letter. It can be two letters. It can be three letters, right? So it's not the case. And you can find more complicated examples from this where you have many steps, right? 
Okay. So so basically, but how, how do we solve? So how many basically? How do we choose a potential candidate for spam? Like some dark down, down criteria. Don't really worry about the complexity. Mm -hmm. well, we have prefix, I guess, because well, yeah. So it has to be very. But let's let's leave it. I was asking about really down to a criteria. Dark criteria is any sub sub word. Yeah. Can be a spam, right? Okay. So this is the dark criteria. Okay. So now how do we check? Well, maybe you do not. Uh, Doesn't really matter. Yeah. How 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 do we how do we check if if the word that you have chosen is a proper stamp? <coughs> um, which well, we solved it already today. Uh, kind of. What? Well, yeah. Yeah, but how? Yeah, but if it's a substring, it's going to be something. So, but but it uh, doesn't really matter what it has to be. How how do we really check that what we have chosen is a valid sum? Just have a function that takes any word and says yes or no whether th this is a sum or not. Really, don't don't think about something overcomplicated. Really easy. So, well, if this word will be matched a few times in this bigger world, right? Well, the last character of previous matching can has to be after the first after or equal the first character of the next matching, right? Yeah. yeah. So the matching cannot be more than the length of the stamp far away, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, right? So we just use our wonderful KMP algorithm, right, and just get all the matchings, right, and uh, and check. Check whether whether they are not too far out. Oh, by the way, what? Uh, yeah, I, I missed the really interesting, important point. Well, what's the complexity of KMP? Because that, that's why we actually use it. Because okay, I I am really stupid. I didn't I give you some algorithm. I didn't really told you why we even use it. So the string matching on its own. What's the complexity of naive string matching, where you compare each character with each, with each other? And when we have two words, S and T, of lengths, but we'll not lose of S and not lose of T. What's the complexity of naive matching algorithm for these two words? And then down. Yeah, so, so, it's, so it's all of S times T. Right? And now, what's the complexity of, of K and T for some string? Can you take the code? Back? The code, okay. But you won't really, well, code doesn't, uh, I, mean, I suppose it does. So for each letter, right, for each prefix, mm -hmm. so we have, like, so say we have some input string S, right? Of length S. So for each letter, what do we do? We actually take the Prefix to suffix, like like another prefix to suffix repeatedly, and now let's let's not worry how many times it is. We will get to it in a minute, and we can increase the the prefix to suffix by one, the plus t plus plus over there, right? So so basically, we we what, what we do is uh, <coughs> something plus one operation, right? And now how many operations we can have here? Well. N increase S increasable, right? But that's naive thinking. Uh, non naive thinking is uh, is amortized complexity. Have you heard about amortized complexity? Okay. So our potential function will be length of the prefix suffix, right? So each time it can increase 
right? So the maximum that our potential function can reach, so we have our potential function of i, right? And the maximum to which it can increase is what? The upper bound. Is is length of the word. As, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now how many so what t equals p of t does, it decreases the prefix of suffix by at least one. And it cannot it cannot really go below zero. Right? So at each point we will add something and take something. But if we cannot add more than s, in principle we cannot take more than s. So amortized complexity of these two operations is linear again. So the whole algorithm has complexity of length of s. Right? So, so now if we just do this, it means the complexity of KMP is sum of length of these two words, as opposed to naive complexity, the <coughs> multiplication of them, product of them, right? So, so it's better, right? That's why we use it. Okay, so back to our problem. Chris, how much time do we have remaining on tape? 11. 11, okay, great. I think I can do it in 11 minutes. Uh, So yes, yeah. so going back to our stuff. So, so what's the complexity of the idea we came up with? So how many words do we check? Well, yes. So if the original word is long length, well, let's make it easy. And right, so. Well, what's, what's the number of subwords? Roughly. What's the order of it? Um, Nine. Nine. So you pick the two to the. Um, okay. Because, like, I think the. Um, every. Um, well, two to the power of n is every uh, subsequence. Because for each element we either take it or not. Um, but we are talking about contiguous subwords. Yeah, so it's, it's two, um, yes. two to the n and two to the n plus one plus two to the n. Not really. So, so think about beginning and then an end of this string. So starting from the beginning, you have n, then if you like start from the second letter, then n minus one. So and so on, so that sorry. So like this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it equals n times n minus one over two, which equals all n squared. Right? Yeah. That's one of the derivations. The simplest one I suppose is we have to choose the beginning and the end of the substring, being one of the indices. So we have to choose two points from among n. So it's just this, which basically evaluates the same thing. Right? Okay, so we have order of n squared subwords, right? So what's the complexity of our check? Uh, I n, right? Because we have some stamp which is shorter than n. Um, and our word, right? And it's linear along it, so it can be at most 2n here, right? So we got all that. So, so the complexity of the whole algorithm is then? Yes. Okay, so now uh, you go. You have a really nice idea how to decrease the number of words we check. So you check three boxes. Okay, that would give us decrease. That what what, what would be the complexity then? Uh, well, it would still be the same. No. Well, no. So how many prefixes do we have for a given word? Well, okay, there are n prefixes. So so so, we have so, 
So yeah, great. Your manager is pleased by this optimization, right? But it's still not what you wanted, right? Because if we input one million characters to the n squared algorithm, it's, there is no way it's gonna finish under a second, right? So we we need something better. So so let's make a little bit stronger observation that won't change a complexity than what you said. So it has to be prefixed. It has to be. Yeah. So it has to be a prefix or suffix, right? So we have our wonder algorithm that wonderful algorithm that finds us all the prefix or suffix. How many prefix or suffix can we get? Well, it's difficult to estimate, but I suppose if you have word consisting only of letters A, again we have n squared and uh, <coughs> prefix or suffixes. <coughs> so, so okay, so we have still n squared complexity, but we notice that our prefix or it has to be a prefix or suffix, right? So, so now the optimization, the, the next optimization is actually kind of difficult. So I will give you some hint. So we have our word that's represented as some line, and we know that the valid stamp, I mean, five, five, okay. So we know that valid stamp has to be a prefix or suffix, right? So it's somewhere here. And somewhere here, right? And now, right? It's prefix or suffix. So now let's not let's say it is prefix or suffix. It's it is valid sum. We checked it and it is, right? Uh, so we can iterate and take another prefix or suffix. So so say we, yeah yeah we take another prefix or suffix. So it's somewhere here. So now this doesn't really tell us much, right? But there is a one special case that actually tells us something. So what if this prefix or suffix of this word is longer than half of a word? What if prefix or suffix of this stamp is longer than half of a word? Well, what does it tell us? is stamp for it. Yeah. That this small one is a stamp yeah. without even checking, right? Because we can take the whole word, cover it with these big stamps yeah. first, yeah. and then cover it with the small ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, and now also, as see again, it works other way around. If this guy is not the not a uh, stamp, then this one cannot be. Because if it was, then this one would be as well. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we have our, our algorithm. We basically start from the biggest prefix or suffix, and if the other one is longer than a half of it, right, then we don't even check it. We know it, it, it's exactly the same. I mean, either not stamp or stamp, but exactly the same as the previous one. Or if it's le less than a half of it, we check it again, right? But it means that the total number of checks we are going to do is of order log n. Yeah, because we always take the twice, at least twice smaller one if we check it, right? So we got our algorithm of order in our algorithm, and it actually works under one second on one million elements. There exists also the algorithm of this complexity, but uh, but it's uh, quite complicated. I mean, easy to implement, but complicated to understand. Uh, so I, I, I won't really have time to explain. So what does it have here? <laughs> well, small observation without <coughs> proof, but you can convince yourself that it's true. That if, if we have some more S, and we are looking for the shortest possible cycle of it. So this is like cycle that actually covers it. So this time not the stamp, but actually like cycle. Like so, so for word x, we look for shortest possible u, such that u to the power of k plus x. Then we take our word of length n, and we take n minus p of n, right? 
where P of n is the length of longest prefixes, proper prefixes out of this big board. And it either divides n, in which this is the length of the of u, or it doesn't divide, and it means that we cannot cover this guy of cycle. And I won't state the proof of it, but it's kind of intuitive. But I just wanted you to know this property because it might turn out useful at some point. And yeah, and I've also Monaco algorithm. So how much time do we have? Two minutes. Okay. Really, really quickly. So homework for you if you ever want to have something to do with word theory again and want to think about uh, about word theory is uh, we have a word S which is something and we want to calculate how many subwords of this word are palindromes right and we want to calculate it in complexity of n again using hashing basically and that's the homework and uh, there is also a linear algorithm for solving this problem which is a monitor algorithm but I don't have time to state it at least not on time so yeah I think we can finish the recording now <laughs>